Okay, and now the great fun begins. If you're wondering how we're recording this, it's just I care that much. So far we have hit zero cyclists. Got a portage sign. Oh, at last. <laughs> and now it is on. Downside, no more portaging today. <laughs> that is an upside. <laughs> so apparently Taters was tired of me talking about our boat being called the Coffee in Danish, yes, yes, please. So uh, she went and got a Danish. <laughs> and we have finally reached lock one. We just got told to please back off because we were a little too close to the intake. This feels just immense in a tiny boat like this. Well, that was the coolest thing we've done today. The scale of that is just kind of amazing. And it's just a day full of fun. Welcome to Five Minutes Later on the Mississippi. Fun time. So much for weather reports. That kind of formed out of nowhere. Mush, Blondie. Mush. It has just been a day out here. Also, we almost got run over by a tugboat, so that was fun. And Taters is already playing chicken with barges. Looks like uh, three wide by four deep. 8.36, we pulled over to this island. Tomorrow should be another interesting day. We know for the weather report that a storm is coming in. The thing the videos miss out on is all the grumbling, groaning, moaning, and occasionally sliding that is involved in getting the boat loaded every morning. Yeah, that was our background noise last night along with the occasional boat coming by. So we do have barge traffic here. And it appears we are being tailgated. Run, Taters, run! Those are just impressively massive. Jen decided she needed to pee and she's apparently unleashed another plague of bugs. Oh, these are actually really cool. <laughs> and today we get to hold on. Taters for scale. So that was fun, not nearly as big of a drop as lock number one. And there goes the masked Somali pirate. And welcome to the lovely town of Hastings. Okay, so that is Prescott. So those people that just got honked at by uh, the barge are over in Wisconsin. We just had a couple of downstrikes in the area, so everybody's kind of headed to ground here. What could possibly go wrong? Decided to pull off again. Just another fun day on the river. So as you can hear, the thunder and lightning's right on top of us. So we're uh, calling it for the day. And here we are, departing Camp Necessity. Everything is damp. Most things are sandy. And here we go again. So we just arrived at lock three. They just said it was going to be an hour and a half wait. So it looks like we are doing Tater's favorite activity, portage. <laughs> Woo! This is really turning into a fun day. We've been looking at Google Maps, trying to figure out where we can put back in. <laughs> We're basically having to jump short sections, lift it up, carry the wheels over, set it back down. That might've actually been uh, worse than that one everybody complains about, Blanchard. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think I'd rather do Blanchard. And there's another tug in line. Really cool feeling out here on the water right now. The wind is going with us for once. Still going our way mostly, but we got some chop. You can tell Taters is getting frustrated because she keeps splashing me with her paddle. And also, whoa! <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh, right. Gotta capture the moment, you know? Otherwise we'll be like, oh yeah, there were like 12 foot waves. It was great. It got better on this side, but that did get kind of interesting for a while. That was without a doubt the single best way to cross the lake. Jen forced me off the water despite my awesome sail. This boat's less than well. The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was tossed. So far, so good-ish. Uh, we've actually, woohoo! The SS uh, Danish and Coffee, yes, yes, please, is uh, moving along at a reasonable pace here. Danish is like, it's okay, I'm still young, I'm gonna live forever. Resupply acquired. 
coffee acquired, but it's like a three out of five. Like me in a relationship, I mean, it's passable, but there's probably better options. I have successfully found Taters, the littlest turtle. Hey, little guy. So we are slowly being overtaken by this barge here. That barge is probably gonna get to lock four around the same time as us. These things take an hour and a half. Plus side, apparently the lock four portage is fairly easy. Yellow thing in the distance is lock four. The lock never answered us, but the uh, tugboat was not overly happy with us being anywhere in the vicinity. So I'm just trying to scout where we're gonna go. We have found something that'll work. We've got lightning bugs and turtle eggs and all sorts of things on our little island. Home sweet home for the night. And we are off into the smoke. We have two locks within a fairly close distance up here, lock five and lock five A. That was satisfying. We are currently waiting for the chamber to fill. Not a turtle. We are approaching lock 5A. They're talking to us. They told us just to just come on through. So that was the most efficient uh, lock traversal we have hit yet. That's the first tug we've seen this morning. Welcome to Winona, home of Enlightened Equipment, and more importantly, a brewery! <laughs> Here is Taters with her beer pile. <laughs> One might wonder, why is all the stuff here and Jen way down there? I know that's what I'm wondering. It's all good, man. We kind of don't have to worry about being distracted by the sounds of nature out here. We're currently trying to find spots without a whole lot of luck here. Welcome to 10 o'clock at night somewhere in southern Minnesota. And morning here in the jungle. She's just cracking up because she can't tie a bowline to save her life. Bowline-like abominations. And that was only slightly horrendous. God knows what plants we've rubbed all over, God knows where. So that is uh, Lock and Dam 6 up there in the smoke. They've said we're first in line, so just book it. Mush Blondie! And that green light is saying that we are free to approach. Now we're going against the headwind and we started having waves coming at us. So we only have about 10 miles now to the next lock. This is lock seven. We've been fighting hellacious headwinds for the last couple hours. We made it into lock seven with no weight. We are on a roll. Things are a little nicer once we got into this side channel, but we're still fighting against a headwind. So we're gonna call it a little early and hopefully have a nicer paddling day tomorrow. We are just about all set up in our happy little island camp. Home sweet home for the night. Still smoky. But on the plus side, it would be hard for today to suck as much as yesterday. <laughs> and there goes Miss Taters. That both felt really good. It makes me wish I was uh, 
still in the water in my underwear versus, you know, <laughs> paddling in sun clothes. And here we are at Lock 8. For the nice lady, we've got about a nine and a half foot drop here. Sadly, no more locks today. Unless taters can have a little faster and get us uh, 31 miles, then we can do the next lock. Here I'd just been thinking that the uh, sky looked like it was clearing of smoke. <laughs> then I happened to turn around and see this. So basically the only reason we didn't stop is we couldn't find a decent camp spot. And now it seems like every spot is taken by people. <laughs> so we finally got a nice beach camp. So all it took for you to have a good day is to leave Minnesota. I think this was about the perfect day on the river. Smooth rising to lock with a happy lock employee. We went swimming twice, we saw a snake. <laughs> the paddling was just Dreamy. The drinks were non-existent. <laughs> the dinner is backpacker crap. <laughs> Compared with yesterday, yes, anything would have been dream. So there's one thing that Miss Sunshine erupting out of her posterior over there is not sharing about our camp. It is a freaking turtle graveyard. And we got tugboats this morning in Camp Mastator. And yet another slightly smoky yet all around spectacular morning in the water. I'm trying to get Jen to uh, study their drifting technique here. So whoever's driving that tugboat, he Mario Karts. Taters does not Mario Kart. Jen has left me in charge of guarding the boat and posting on Instagram. <laughs> in the middle of the big water crossing over to lock and dam number nine and we are kind of crawling because unfortunately my right shoulder is acting up again <laughs> and if you're wondering how we could possibly make this harder on ourselves see this yes shortcut it's a term for oh god i hope this doesn't clip out we're just getting a little bit of resistance training lock nine south end, can you we are about 20 minutes out from the lock so we'd like to go in after the bar oh, I do that. And sadly, our record of making it through cleanly has ended. So that uh, houseboat has been stuck here with us and we just paddled over to make friends. Friends with a refrigerator with drinks in it. <laughs> we really like them. Apparently the line is expanding a bit here. <laughs> this is certainly different. We have certainly entered the party zone here. So that boat over there came over and we couldn't figure out like what was going on. They were actually conservation officers checking our life jackets. <laughs> Not the best spot. We're a little close to the city and there's uh, train tracks and traffic across the way. But at least we got a spot to ourselves. Home sweet home for the night. <laughs> so here we are after a night of waking up repeatedly due to trains and now it's raining. Whoa! Jen, you've unleashed one of the biblical plagues. <laughs> this was actually a pretty nice camp outside of just all the noise. Considering <laughs> it's a couple of days before the 4th of July, I'm pretty sure the party crews are going to be our constant companions for a while. They're all in like bikinis and lobster red skin and um, here we come like draped in all the clothing. Only a couple of tugs, but a lot of party boats. And we were able to fill up on water here. Those bugs are starting to appear just everywhere. We're ending up seeing hatties of them that have drowned. There is a red yellow thunder cell, which looks like it may roll right over us. The wind just kicked in straight into our faces. We're just talking about how nostalgic we are. We hadn't been caught out in the middle of nowhere uh, with lightning on the river in, you know, weeks. Jen, did I mention there was a tornado down south? Just saying. We're making for the lock, but uh, we're keeping an eye on things. Lock 10, this is a southbound canoe. Yeah, here, just keep it going. Thank you. And they were obviously watching for us because the doors just started to open. Plus side of all the weather craziness is uh, the boats all cleared out and went home. So the lock employee mentioned storms basically not coming north. I'm feeling so if you're finding this on our charred bodies floating down the Mississippi, 
She loves comments like that. You see that joy on her face? And that's what we call the damn fun zone that they don't allow us into. <laughs> Stupid nanny state. We're just enjoying the lack of wake for a few minutes. Now we get to see, post resupply, how long will Blondie paddle when she knows that if she stops, there is champagne. <laughs> I think somebody was just traumatized by all the noise last night. Oh my gosh, these trains were so loud, they were so close, there were party boats going all night long. There were? Oh. <laughs> there aren't like snapping two turtles that uh, bite testicles in here, are there? Super quiet here in camp right up until the point when the trains come by. Beach camping, as with many things, looks, sounds great until you're there and sand literally gets everywhere. Right about where Taters is, that's where the uh, croc sucking mud starts. Today, we have some friends coming out, Groovy and Mad Hermit. We somehow got on a topic that ended up with Taters saying she was looking for the optimistic side of doubt. <laughs> Oh, cordage pulling. They actually said we get to pull the cord in addition to calling them. So this is the wall the toes use to kind of like line up the barges. <laughs> Yank. Nope. Oh, yep. <laughs> They were out at the same time, but I never met them. We had friends and they're actually going to grab uh, cold beer and Thai food. Mush Blondie. And now we are skedaddling, trying to get out of here before anybody runs us over in the dock. Contentment is running high. The will to paddle through a lot of boats, not running so high. I'm assuming that tug must be kind of annoyed at those speedboats going right in front of it. Taters is fully expecting to hear a loud bang any minute now where they take out that bridge. In which case we can sell this footage to CNN. Not nearly as nice as what we had last night, but both of us would much rather have okay and private over nicer and busy. We're basically endlessly entertained by glowy bugs. It's about 7.30, we're getting a ready to pack of camp. It is blazingly hot here this morning. <laughs> it is warm. Back to houses, party boats, jet skis, and nobody offering us cold drinks. And time to see if we're gonna be lucky. Lock 12, this is southbound, can you? Yeah, I'll get you when you get here. Thank you. <laughs> and not only are we cleared to go through, but there is actually a subway on the other side of this, and we are super excited for food and cold drinks. Fortunately, we are getting at least a little bit of cloud cover because it is just brutal when the sun is out. And yes, I know it's going to get hotter. We're all going to die when we go south. We get told that a lot. <laughs> There would be Tater's turtles as they plop into the water. And now for the afternoon stretch break. We are both feeling much cooler. I'm not sure Matt's going to come back out of the river. <laughs> I'm going for the gold. <laughs> there are a few things more relaxing than being on the river. <laughs> I think if that's the mercury soaking into your brain talking. <laughs> oh, weird foot fetish. <laughs> My shoulder started hurting again. I'm just getting older by the day here. Decrepitude, death is setting in. So you would think with how often we've done this, we would be really good at picking out slopes and things. <laughs> Happy 4th of July, everyone. Oh no. <laughs> so per the ever unreliable weather forecast, this isn't going to last super long. All we think when we see that now, it's not like, oh no, we need to stay out of their way. That's easy enough. We're just worried about getting stuck for two hours at a lock while they uh, have to go through. So guess which side of the boat Matt sits in? And which side Blondie sits in? I wasn't really sure what to expect before this trip as far as overall vibe on the river. I've been told that the different sections are very different from each other, but sections like this I feel like are roughly pretty similar to the picture I had in my head before starting this trip. You talk to less people than I did, because everybody's like, you're gonna die, the barges will run you over. <laughs> Wide, slow moving water, some traffic around, but tree-lined banks. The 
main channel is over there on the other side of those islands. We optimistically took a chance thinking we could go to the left side of the islands and we find ourselves once again walking the boat over very, very shallow water. Lock 13, this is South Sound Canoe. 13 back, uh, it'll be about 10, 15 minutes. They're not chatty in this part of the lock system. Jen just tried to convince them to flush us out of the lock. For the record, they can turn the valves on and give you a shove out like a uh, barge. It's not as fun and awesome as you might think though. We were picturing like, you know, fountains of water shooting us ahead. I thought we'd be past Clinton already. <laughs> Even the power of uh, somebody's disapproval back there did not carry us out as fast. I was hoping. Oh well, at least we've done science today. Where this always sounds like less work when we're thinking about it. And with the usual mix of morning chaos and productivity, we are about to get going here. And we are off and we are extremely warm. Next time we're inside of an Airbnb or something, I need to video myself sitting in the nice air conditioning. That way I can play it back in times like these and just remember <laughs> when I was happy. And our host said we were the most interesting people that have ever stayed there. <laughs> For days we've had people in jet skis running all over the place. And now everybody's gone. So unfortunately that's where we decided to take out last night, which was a bit more of a challenge than the uh, boat gone would have been. So that boat started coming over closer. And they chased us down to give us uh, cold coffee. <laughs> and cookies. Thank you again! <laughs> we are going to be so caffeinated today. <laughs> Taters, we are paddling until midnight. And apparently Taters really likes cold brew because she keeps drinking my cold brew. <laughs> there is going to be a caffeine crash on this boat and it is not <laughs> going to be pretty. We pulled over for a snack break and apparently so Jen can give herself heart palpitations. Anyway, <laughs> actually got a lightning alert that said 99 strikes in the 24 mile radius. It's fine, Jen, it's fine. And here something comes. I've been hearing thunder pretty much nonstop. Wow. Man, Jen, that storm behind you looks like, what the hell are people doing on the water levels? Fun times! Are we having fun yet? Yes. <laughs> Still no funnel clouds, which is a shame because I have a great episode name. All we need is one right behind Jen, right about like there. Oh, I think the torrential rain just hit us. So yeah, the rain came down a fair amount there. So in addition to getting like that much water in the bottom, we were able to get this out. Matt did say earlier today, the only thing that would make this better is a tailwind. We got the topless volleyball girl. So I, so I think we can say a perfect day on the river. Where, where are the girls? So I just got yelled at by Miss Gigglinator back there. One of those rain things was looking a little thicker and I got excited that maybe it was a twister and we were about to have the best YouTube thumbnail ever. Taters is not quite as uh, positive thinking as certain people in this boat. Also, unfortunately, the wind is now going against us. Because I figured if we can get like me and Jen in the tornado, you know, funnel of love. Great title. She's laughing now. In the moment, she was a little more upset. Didn't even joke about wishing for that. <laughs> joke about wishing. <laughs> I wasn't really joking. <laughs> so I actually just called Lock 14 on a cell phone. He said he's got north and southbound traffic coming through. This looks like it might be complicated at the lock because we've got a big cruise ship, a little cruise ship, the tug that just passed us, and we can just see another tug around the corner. We've been dodging around barges that are conspicuously uh, pulled over. We think that it may be due to a line up ahead. We're uh, gonna go up to the lock, talk to them, and see. We may have to camp on this side. I mean, it's probably not the best sign that it's uh, almost eight o'clock and just started raining on us again. Still no funnels of love also. So when we called the lock, they said that there is a narrow window because they've got traffic going both ways. And they also told us to uh, stay clear of a ship, 
which we're assuming is that. So we are basically trying to pull over into this corner, wait for that to go, and then hopefully they sneak us in. We have seen tugs going into the locks, but I think this is the first time we've come across one coming out. They just fit us in between the barge and their helper craft, and this is a weird lock. All the others have been much taller. So that was basically perfect timing. Now there's a tugboat waiting for us on the other side. I heard them over the radio. They nicely offered to get out of our way. <laughs> we greatly appreciate when things about uh, 1,000 times our size get out of our way. Okay, <laughs> I'm doing what you asked. God, she's gotten punchy today. <laughs> And taters want to do the small island, so we're going to at least check that. This actually was a cozy little campsite, as long as you ignore the poison ivy and the stench of death. I was half expecting that we were going to pull away the tent to find, like, a, uh, you know, half-buried hand or a dead turtle or something. I want to go back to battling last night. <laughs> it was so nice. Stay tuned on Massitators on the Mississippi for whether either of us is susceptible to poison ivy, because... <laughs> Pretty sure we ended up getting some unavoidable exposure there on uh, that little death island. And it's sunny and beautiful, which means in about 10 minutes, it could be thunder, lightning, tornadoes, God knows what. So this is Davenport. We've basically got tow barges going back and forth. Having all sorts of fun out here. Big bridge, little boat. So this is lock 15. You can see there's actually a boat in the main lock, but when we called them, they said it'll be about 10 minutes. Go to the auxiliary lock, which is on the right. And this is kind of loud compared with the earlier parts of the river. We're not sure why this one operates the auxiliary and all the others do not. Oh, the damn fun zone. And now we have big water and a tow coming up. We could just barely hear on the radio over the wind and the train and everything. Locke and him talking about how we were in the middle of the channel, so he waited till we cleared. And once again, a slightly less than ideal camp. It did feel like there was a lot of exertion for basically just making our normal miles. And somebody's got a little more energy than somebody else this morning. <laughs> I need so more excited coffee. For another gorgeous day on the river with you. I can be enthusiastic too. Maybe we'll see that funnel cloud that we've been dreaming of. Oh, hey, when you don't have your mask on, I can see the disapproval on you here. We're gonna be in the main channel a little bit more today. Lock 16, this is southbound, can you? Okay, so much for uh, taters talking to the lock because they don't care. And Jen finally got a call back from lock 16. We were told that we'd have to wait about 30, 40 minutes and uh, just kind of set up on that beach out of the way of the tow. <laughs> that seems like it'd be a fun job. And this is probably the closest to a moving tugboat that we are going to get. And they just came on the radio and said they're ready for a little of us. I find great entertainment in how non-standard all these locks are. <laughs> and we are through and now just 20 miles and we may actually make another lock today. So our water fill up certainly has water plumbed. Sadly, Jen won't let me go play. Water park's the other way. So Matt always makes sure to film things that I like, like tiny turtles. So I will film things that Matt likes, like bikini girl? Calm, calm, glassy water. And it looks like we might not be in this horrendous sunlight all day. Funnels of love, Blondie. None of those are funnels. <laughs> Yet. Yet. I am now on turtle spotting duties. We are totally going to get hit by something. Oh, so pretty. Lock 17, this is southbound canoe. Are you downbound or upbound? Yeah, we'll get things ready for you once you're in sight. Thank you. Jen and I have just been remarking repeatedly about how peaceful it is out here. We were kind of worried when we first hit St. Paul was that it was going to be like that basically the entire way. It's nice that uh, we've still had kind of the islands and the big green corridor. Punctuated by industrial bits, of course. And that went pretty smooth. 
fooled by people. <laughs> we think they were a little bored. <laughs> it's a pretty quiet day out here. We're not quite ready to stop, but we're worried about going much further. And the perfect way to end the day, scrambling as it starts to rain on us. Good timing. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. And now the horror that is trying to pack up with wet sand everywhere. <laughs> so about 2.30 last night, I wake up to banging. And I'm like, oh no, there's a bear or something messing with the boat. Look over, Taters isn't there because apparently she had had a dream. This dream drove her to wake up, get out of the tent while it was drizzling, and she was using her boat to bail water out of the canoe at 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's raining so hard for so long and we didn't turn the boat over because we're like, oh, there's no big deal having a bunch of water in the boat. But then I just had this dream and I'm like, I don't know. So I just pictured it like totally full of water. And then I couldn't basically get back to sleep even once I stopped getting bit by all the mosquitoes that she let in at about 2.45 in the morning. The other thing I didn't capture is when she got out the first time, she saw a frog in her crock and just like completely wigged out. So all of a sudden she's like, Aah! I'm like, oh, oh, what? Armed gunman, what, where? I need more coffee for all of this. Good night. And today on Massitators on the Mississippi, barges, rain, and a startling lack of coffee. Blah. Wendy, to the very back of the boat. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> and now for the first adventure of the morning, trying to see if this channel actually goes through. And sure enough, that did indeed require uh, getting out of the boat and walking it. Block 18, this is downbound canoe. Any chance we can get in before the tow? Do you happen to know if there's any uh, good portage route around? And this is fun because we can see on the satellite map, but it looks kind of funny from this side. So little trust in this relationship. She thought I was going to get us sucked over the dam. And if I was going to get us sucked over the dam, I would have had the camera out and been going, woo -hoo -hoo! We're going to be around before the tow even gets there. Those guys totally could have gotten us through. They just don't like canoeists. Well, that was far and away the very easiest portage we've done on this entire trip. It's a good thing we didn't wait two hours behind that tow. I would have felt really stupid. For anyone else doing this, I would recommend just not bothering with Lock 18 at all. Just come over here. And we just made some very friendly friends. We were paddling by and I'm like, oh, let's, let's, let's go close. We can like wave to people and... Everybody wave! I met these friends. What's your guys' name? Matt and Jen. <laughs> Matt and Jen. We gave them some Coolers Light. Bush light. And Bush Light. Bush light. <laughs> <laughs> he gave us uh, three beers and uh, chips and lots of things. So we were doing really well today and now we are behind. I feel super on track right now. <laughs> Whatever's going on. Mush Blondie. Mush. Nine o'clock and we found something that works. This is going to be home sweet home for the night. And today on Massitators on the Mississippi, resupply and trying to control Tater's drinking. And probably lock 19 later in the day. Oh yeah, and the lock that is the big draw. Expectations are high. After it was lowered by uh, lock 18, not liking us little canoeists. Lock 19, this is down down canoe. Yeah, 19 back. Will we be able to go through? Uh-oh, <laughs> that's a worrying delay. At least they're considering, they're not like, nope. <laughs> Just come on, head on down. We were supposed to have some pleasure boats to go up, and I haven't seen them, so we'll have to get her shut back up and fill her up for you. Got it. Thank you. That was an odd interaction. <laughs> And this is, of course, the one that we've been looking forward to because it is actually a much bigger lock with a bigger drop, more akin to that first one. This lock is already more exciting than the other ones. The water around us is bubbling everywhere. We're drifting toward the lock at a rapid speed. And at long last. So this lock is much bigger. Okay, that was cool. 
We wish we could just go back and forth, but we figure they'd probably tell us no eventually. <laughs> and now we come right out into a taters bridge. This just has all the things. And we hear the current's gonna be faster. So per the lock employee, every time they run that, it is 38 million gallon flowed through. Million gallons per foot of drop drops 38 feet. A lot of gallons sent through just for little of us. So this is kind of cool. It's like uh, the Coast Guard are the people that put the uh, channel buoys out. I'm pretty sure she picks the buggiest parts of the shore to try and go up. So we got covered in bugs and she didn't find a place to camp. So we're basically just worse off than we were about two minutes ago. So somewhat reluctantly, we started looking for a campsite. At least it was barely windy and the wind was actually helping us a little bit at the end. I'd kind of been hoping to swim, but considering we are right downstream from a big industrial facility that was discharging unknown things into the water, I think I'll probably pass tonight. Today on Mass Staters on the Mississippi, Matt's wrong about everything. Staters is talking with her Somali pirate burger. Try and make it look heavier. And that is the grand town of Keokuk, which based on what we came back by last night is heavily industrialized on this side. Not quite as wide as we had yesterday, but it's still big. I thought you would be disapproving more than This guy actually invited us up. Uh, he has one of those cabins on stilts. It's the one that has the fire going. Apparently they have hosted a bunch of paddlers here over the years. For the record, I was paddling and listening to my audiobook and look what taters has slowed me into. <laughs> it's late morning and technically I'm on a different time zone. Ooh. <laughs> Judgmental taters. So, <laughs> so we are delayed a little bit again, but uh, those guys are really nice. And today on Mass Taters on the Mississippi, do we make any Mississippi River miles or is Taters just going to take endless breaks today? <laughs> I got you those adult diapers for a reason. See how she freezes? She, she knows that if she reacts, things go on YouTube. So instead she just very calmly tries to stare off into the distance <laughs> and hopes I go away. The ongoing adventures of Finding turtles for taters before they pop off of the branch like that. <laughs> Hasn't really been warm enough to swim, so shore breaks are generally stretching breaks. Oh. oh. <laughs> On to lock 20. We just had a fish that was probably about 20 pounds jump out uh, right about there to there and splash us. And we're around lock 20, and unfortunately, it looks like there might be a barge in it. Lock 20, this is downbound commute. Oh, not this again. <laughs> They're just busy. Maybe. What's the rough wait time? Nothing about 45 minutes to an hour. Thank you. Tater just got attacked by a very, very <laughs> large fish. <laughs> Sounded like we hit a rock. It hit the side of the boat right here. And that's, I think it hit my back a little bit too. That's number three. I think they're starting to learn from those orcas that have started attacking ships, you know? <laughs> so we are stuck here waiting, but I did find Taters a duck to keep her company. Little does that tug know, though, that once they get over there, those fish are not going to take their crap. Okay, now that would be a little more fun to be by. <laughs> and it is finally our turn. Uh, no ropes and uh, nobody to keep an eye on us. Taters could be up to God knows what. She just abandoned a duck on the side of the river, so... This was the first lock since number one that just kind of let us float free. They did warn us to be careful not to get stuck behind the doors, lest you think that there's not safety protocols. We made friends again. After uh, going so long without people, uh, you know, with people just waving, got here from two different people today. There's Taters paddling away from Matt's Pizza. The paddle into sadness. We have had fish jumping all around us. There we go. <laughs> so we've been doing our usual. <laughs> Having fun in there without your dead weight in the front. I thought she might particularly like this because somebody left a vegetable here. <laughs> that is very random. <laughs> Good morning from Massataters Island. We finally got our little pinnacle point sandbar camp that we'd been hoping for. Unfortunately, we were woken up today with this side wind coming in. The good news is conditions seem to change so quickly out here. We at least have hope that the wind won't last all day. I mean, that, that's only happened once so far in uh, 37 some days. Looking forward to another lovely day on the river. Should be a really pleasant paddling through lots of farmland. 
Scootering off to the sides, maybe see some fish, That's see some turtles. Fish. I've literally got notification chance of severe isolated thunderstorms. <laughs> now you're just being difficult. <laughs> so for whatever reason, the current has just really been flying through here. We need to be on the left because we are doing a town stop. Taters for scale. We're currently trying to make best time into Quincy. That's going to be our water stop and potentially coffee and burrito stop. And there goes Jen on her burrito mission. So I am currently here on guard duty underneath the boat club <laughs> outside of Quincy. And Taters returns in victory. Even I'll admit this is a little bit better than peanut butter and oatmeal. And now for everybody's favorite game, can the little canoe make it through all the barges in one piece? Two tries and we've yet to get a response, so we're just making for the gates. So Jen called uh, twice, I called once. We got over here and we're ringing the chain. <laughs> the guy came over and, hey, you want a lock? And so I tested the radio and got told that we're talking on the wrong channel because I was not doing a request to lock. So we have no idea what's going on here. They do some pretty laid back at this lock. They didn't even throw us a rope to hold. That's why Matt did lock load yoga, holding on to the ladder. Over the last two weeks or so, everyone we've met has told us how their part of the river is the best part. And once we get south of their part, it's just going to get worse. So far, it hasn't really gotten worse. It's kind of been uh, uh, about the same, I would say. We'll see how it gets as we go further south. Finally starting to get at least the occasional break. Uh, thanks to clouds, it's been just brutal today. Afternoon swim break. And Matt is making noises like it is satisfyingly cold. Getting out of the boat to swim was pretty much the best thing ever. Followed by the worst thing ever, which is getting back out. Bondi says I have to wear clothes, something about scaring the natives. Approaching lock 22 for the second time today. We got no response on the radio. It looks like this is yet another dam with a nice easy spillway. We're going with the spillway plan because you gotta die sometime. What? For the record, these spillways would be so much more fun if the water was a little higher. But I guess we don't know what the lock behind us is doing, so it could get more fun at any moment, Jen. And Jen is bringing the car around. And we are basically gonna go over the spillway, down that, all because Jen didn't wanna go into the current right under the dam, because she's feeling boring today. And of course we are losing daylight quickly here. And we are pretty much done with daylight. There's <laughs> no camp in sight. This island has an easy takeout and some trees that look promising. And there's wine and ravioli tonight. Home sweet home for the night. The water level did not come up last night, so good news we didn't get swept away. Bad news we have to carry the boat further this morning. And here we go. On the plus side, we have severe thunderstorms in the air. <laughs> the container's getting all buffed there. Now I have to fight her for the heavier bags. We just had like five very large fish jump really damn high. Okay, apparently don't ask taters to measure anything whatsoever. See the tugboat that was a thousand times our size. <laughs> the rocks back there in a line are something called a wing dam. Welcome to Matt knowing things. We have really, really low water. It is drought sand for most of the route this year. They are high enough where they actually block us going through sometimes. And unfortunately, we are pretty much straight into a headwind today. So far, it hasn't been too bad, just slow and annoying. Normally, we're looking at stuff like that and going, oh, I hope it doesn't hit, not wanting to get soaked. But considering it's 90 degrees out here, we basically really enjoy the cloud cover and rain is not a bad thing. Oh, that breeze feels so good. Now, if it could just go that way and we could get the sail out. Oh, yes, I am getting this out at every opportunity because it's awesome. Not giving up on that whole, like, funnel of love thumbnail thing. <laughs> And here we are at the maybe not so uh, vegetarian friendly restaurant. And they even managed to make taters something <laughs> vegetarian-ish. First time they offered her a turkey burger, which I said was pretty much vegetarian. <laughs> so the only problem with going into an air conditioned restaurant like that is then you have to come back outside and you remember what heat and humidity is. 
So just to be extra confusing, this town right across from the marina we stopped at is called uh, Louisiana, Missouri. And if it looks like the wind is blowing basically 180 degrees from earlier, that is pretty much exactly what's going on. Lock 24, this is southbound canoe. 24, bud. We'll get everything ready right now. Oh, yay. Wow. Those guys must have been watching us here. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. Feeling so much love over the radio. So we're having good luck with the lock, but uh, the storm keeps inching a little bit closer. <laughs> We've uh, been here in thunder now for the last 10 minutes or so. So this is lock 24, no lines or anything. So we are just paddling straight for them. After the experience yesterday, we were ready if they delayed us at all to basically go over the spillway, which is out that direction. <laughs> this one's also kind of interesting because there are literally houses right next to it. people moving around here and there, but nobody's come over to say hi. <laughs> and I made Taters take her mask off, so it's not that thing. And it feels really empty out here. And every time it feels super empty and there are really big clouds in the vicinity, I start wondering if everybody like knows something I don't. <laughs> and now Jen is happy, because not only do we have a rainbow, but a double rainbow. And once again, best time of the day. Oh, I never want to stop. It is absolutely lovely out here, and I really wish we had just 30 minutes more of daylight. If you can hear a hum, that is an atrocious amount of bugs. And here come the mayflies. And this appears to be the mating and dying pile. And we moved our usual in the tent morning activities to outside of the tent because it is bloody boiling out here. And there are the twitching remains of our little mayfly orgy that hit us last night. And so that toe is staring at me standing here in my underwear filming them. Morning here in Camp Macitators where I was just told it was funny when I cry. <laughs> So we are currently about 70 miles from Chain of Rocks, which is St. Louis. We have been warned by multiple locals that St. Louis is not somewhere you want to linger, camp, etc. We know a campsite around Chain of Rocks that marked as the last, you know, quote unquote, safe campsite until you cross through the town. With all the heat, our uh, water requirements are going way up. So if you see me chugging out of this, sadly, it is not just drinking cold brew all day, as glorious as that would sound. This is now our uh, electrolyte jug. Yes, these things are annoying, but this is nowhere near as bad as Minnesota. And we are super excited to be away from the shore with all whatever these new bugs are and uh, to be headed towards clouds because it looks like there's a front coming from the south. Find it interesting how the houses are built around here with the flooding and everything. Free boat, snake included. Jen is totally going to get me bit by this thing. Now it's going to bite taters. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Really not sure when the current picks up on the river, but it sure seems like we're having more and more current. So we're really glad to have cloud cover, but it is really hot and humid out here. Weather's claiming it uh, feels like 95. You paddle, I'll just swim behind you to the lock. <laughs> lock 25, this is southbound view. And after not getting a response, I did check the documentation and turns out that while all the other locks are on channel 14, this is on 12. We got a response pretty much instantly saying 10 minutes to cycle the lock. And with only minimal delay, it looks like we are up. So there was actually a stupid amount of effort to get those stickers on the side of the boat that say, you know, Mississippi source to sea. So we get really frustrated when somebody comes and like, oh yeah, how far are you going? And we're like, oh, just out, you know, two miles going around. Somebody did just come out though. And they did ask us that question, but they said they just looked up our website. So finally, one person. All that work. Also for only the third time, we did not have to tie in, hold on to anything. We've just been floating down here like mad men, mad women. So, uh, oh. That looks both fun and like it is very inefficient. And now we have about 50 miles to go to our setup to St. Louis. And it looks like we may have uh, re-entered one of the party zones here. We got offered beer, but we figured we didn't want to stop in the middle of that mess. We have no idea what's going on here.
full after nine o'clock, so we're pushing it more than we normally would, but it's been a really occupied area with marinas everywhere. We found a sandbar on the map that we're aiming for. And this is kind of annoying, but we got something that'll work. We just have one lock left tomorrow, as well as the chain of racks portage. And welcome to far, far too early in the morning. He's a friend with a towel which I'm kind of excited by because trying to swab off with a pair of dirty underwear is kinky, but not that fun. I swear our boat gains weight sometimes. And it is supposed to be even warmer than yesterday today. And we are racing the uh, cancer barge over here. And welcome to Grafton, our morning bathroom and water stop, and the Illinois River, which will hopefully uh, kick up the flow here. We are kind of hoping the thunderstorms blow in and uh, save us from this horrible sunlight. We've had more and more of those carts jumping around us and for the first time we just had one jump clear over the boat right in front of me. If this looks like Jen may have just left me in the middle of the Mississippi on a log again, that would be because that's a fair summary. Bye Blondie, she's actually paddling upstream rather than coming back and getting me. Enjoy the rest of your trip. I'll just be here. We finally have some clouds giving some relief. And our very last lock is over there on the other side of that bridge. We are just having all sorts of fun here. <laughs> Southbound canoe to Lock Mel Price. We're about 15 minutes out. Will we be able to pass through? And not right this second. We got that tow boat that's right on your tail coming down behind you. Anybody that portages around here, they go to the Missouri side of the dam there, and there's a little rock uh, bank they go up and over the other side. Thank you. So that would be a couple hour wait, so we're going to have to uh, portage all around the right of our last uh, lock. Turns out there are actually two barges behind us, so there's no way we're sitting here for three or four hours waiting to get through. It doesn't look like it's going to be quite as simple as those last couple of the spill dams. So this is going to be an obnoxious portage. We're going to have to go all the way down to a boat launch down there. Jen, you're going to miss this so much. And now it's looking fun because, so that guy came out of the lock and we've got him parked here. We don't know if he's active or not. So we basically just try and stay far enough away where we don't go into his blind spot, but not far enough into the channel to get in the way of the other guy. Don't ask us what's going on here. So we finally reached the confluence with the Missouri River. Look at that. Flow. This is cool. This is looking on the Mississippi side. Looks about same as usual, coloration, etc. And then you can see where the Missouri is coming in and it's going so much faster. And there goes Taters, hopefully having secured our boat. Hopefully. And I'm just capturing this before we hit ludicrous speed. <laughs> hold it, hold it. The Missouri has taken control. And so that arrow right there is pointing into a canal. It basically goes for 8.4 miles and then you get to lock 27. Little craft is recommended to stay over here. That's the way we're going. And now for Tater's favorite game, where exactly are the rapids? I don't know what the purpose of that is, but that is the Airbnb I want to stay at tonight. Looks like we're finally getting hit by one of the thunderstorms. Probably the best uh, lightning we've had since we thought we were going to die in the headwaters. Ooh, oh, you got to go out there. <laughs> yeah, this stuff happens around me. Sorry. <laughs> and that is how much rain came down. I don't know how many strikes we had, but that just went crazy. Everybody eventually gave up. Car was rocking. It was uh, interesting. I like how we're doing beach launches now, Jen. And that is what the chain of rocks looks like from below. <laughs> Probably best we didn't go over it. So you might be thinking, hey, it doesn't look like this storm is done. Why are those crazy people paddling? Because uh, it's going to get dark and there's another big storm coming in. So we are trying to make it across <laughs> before it does. We are trying to paddle like crazy, but I just wanted to capture the uh, electrical show going on there. Paddle faster, Blondie! Paddle faster! The most epic tater sets the tent up ever. The wind's just too strong. And this just got worse. Storm's too bad. We're having to pack up again. What a crazy day for Team Massitators. Home sweet home for the night. 
I seem to recall yesterday saying last portage. I'm glad to see that's not the case. And things are so wet and sandy, I'm not even wearing pants. And I am starving and Jen, they have something fried. This explains why the canoe's not going straight. Oh. There's gonna be some murdering once I get into the tent tonight.